So we talked about the general definition of sequence in English. It's basically a ordered list of things. Usually it's a list of events or things that happened, but in our case it's a list of numbers. In English, series really means the same thing. But in mathematics, it's slightly different. What series is, is the sum of a sequence. So in math, a series is if you started with a sequence and added together the terms, instead of just looked at them in a, in a big list. So we'll start with that definition. So series is the sum of a sequence. So all finite uh, series Have finite sums, meaning if you add up a finite number of numbers, you can do that and you get a number. Uh, when it comes to infinite series, some infinite series ha have infinite uh, sums and some of them don't. So infinite are a little more tricky. Basically, infinite series are more tricky. And you're going to look at infinite series again in calculus 2, if you're going that far. So let's start with some fun algebra. I want you to multiply these terms together. You're basically foiling. The, way, the best way to do it is take this term, multiply it to the 1, then take the term and multiply it to r, take that same term to r squared, then write dot, 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 and then multiply it by the last term right there. So I'll do the first term. So there's 1 minus r times 1. And there's r times 1 minus r. Now we got r squared. Plus, here's where I'm going to write the dot, dot, dot. Plus r n minus 1 times 1 minus r. So this is what I call superfoiling. It's really just distributing. There's a lot more than just a first last here. So we have 1 minus r plus r minus r squared plus r squared minus r cubed plus dot 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 plus rn minus 1 minus r to the n. So any algebra questions on that product right there? So let's start canceling. What is a term I could cancel? R squared. What, what can I cancel r squared with? A negative r squared. So they're basically occurring in pairs. Not everything is paired up. So the r squared minus r squared, what else cancels? What else cancels? 
Yep, so we got our r to the first power cancels out, r squared cancels out. If you think about this dot, dot, dot pattern, what term do you think would appear next? What pair of terms? It would be an r cubed minus r to the fourth. That would be the next term in that pattern. So r cubed is going to cancel negative r cubed. So the way I'm going to write that, that minus r cubed is going to cancel the first term in that et cetera, et cetera pattern. So let's think about what's happening at the end here. Here's the last term right here. This r to the n minus 1 is going to cancel out with the last term that would appear in that pattern. That dot, dot, dot pattern, the last term will cancel the r to the n minus 1. And then what's left, we have minus r to the n. So the only things we have remaining, 1 minus r to the n. So all that stuff cancels out to something really nice. And I'm just going to write that up at the top. So I'm going to rewrite this now. And so I'm going to divide by 1 minus r. So that was some easy algebra, just divided by this 1 minus r term right there. OK, so you should believe this equation. We just multiplied it all out and looked at the algebra. So we saw why this is equal here. What I want to do now is think about the left, the left side. If we look, this is basically uh, adding up a bunch of r to increasing powers. If I rewrite 1, 1 is r to what power? r to the 0. And if I'm very explicit about the powers, it's r to the 0 plus r to the first plus r to the second, all the way to r to the n minus 1. OK, this is the geometric uh, sum, a finite geometric sum. So I'm going to write this out in sigma notation, and then I will describe what this notation is. So this is what we call sigma notation. So sigma is capital Greek letter. It looks like a sideways M or sideways W. I think if you see it printed out nicely, it has these little tiny things right here, but those don't really matter. So there's a sigma. What does this mean? So at the bottom, this is a lot like the notation I showed you for uh, sequences. The only difference is this sigma means add the terms. Don't just write them out, but add them together. So the first term will be looking at the bottom. The first k value is 0. So this is a 0 plus. All you do is you just go up by 1 each time with k. So a 0 plus a 1 plus a 2. 
plus all the way to a n. So I'm going to go really fast back to uh, sequences and show you that it's really similar to, here we go. It's almost the exact same as the notation at the top of the board there. The only difference is instead of using the uh, curly brackets, you're using that sigma. But it has, still has the initial value at the bottom, the final value at the top, and you just increase by 1 going down. The only difference is you got plus, plus, plus instead of comma. All right, so that's sigma notation. So that's the finite geometric sum. Now let's look at the infinite geometric sum. So the difference between finite and infinite is how many terms? So instead of having n or n minus 1 terms total, we're going to now have infinite terms. So we put infinity at the top. So let's just naively replace little n by infinity. So the only strange term in here is this r to the infinity power. What in the world is that going to be? So let's think about r. Let's take a r that is small, meaning the absolute value is less than 1. So what happens if you take a small number and raise it to a really high power? Let's just take an easy number like a half. What's a half raised to a really big power? Really small number. Really, you don't even have to go that high up on the powers. I think 1 half raised to the 50th power your calculator will probably just tell you zero. It gets small very quickly. So if r is small, this term right here, r to a huge power, is going to be tiny. What happens if r is big, meaning bigger than 1? So let's take an easy number like 2. So 2 to a huge power is going to be a really huge number. And it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The problem is if your radius is greater than 1 or big, you're uh, going to get infinity right here or negative infinity. So what that means is if r is small, what we're going to get is 1 minus 0 over 1 minus r. Of course, we don't need to write 1 minus 0. We just get 1 over 1 minus r when r is small. So if our radius is small, we get this. Now, what happens if r equals 1? What is 1 raised to every single power? One. So in this case, we're adding 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, etc. And we're going to get infinity. So in R equals 1, you get infinity. And what about when R is greater than 1? So if R is a 2, you would get 2 plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed. So you're going to add, you're going to get to infinity as well. You actually get a sum that gets to uh, approaches infinity a little faster. So an R is 1, or you could just write down absolute value of R is greater than or equal to 1. That's a better condition. So we're just going to go with uh, absolute value of R is greater than or equal to 1. We're going to get infinity or undefined.
All right, let's do some geometric examples. So we're using DNE for does not exist. So we'll do a few different examples here. So I think we did a series, uh, a sequence that was really similar to this. All we're going to do now is add the terms together. So step one, write it in sigma notation. So what is the pattern occurring right here? What do I multiply by to get to the following term? So one third. So we get one third to, I'll use i, one third to the i. What is our initial i value? Should it be zero, one, or something else? So I wanna hit the first term right there with the value that I put in right here. So one third to what power equals one? One third to what power equals one? Zero. Was that question too easy? All right, so we're starting at zero. So we get the correct initial term right there. Now we're going to figure out a final term. So I want to match up over here. So one third to what power is 243? So take about 30 seconds and figure out what power do I raise one third to get 243? It's probably something like three, four, five, or six, somewhere in that, in that range. These are things I expect you to be able to do without a calculator. You can write out, just keep multiplying by three until you hit 243, and just count how many times you did that. Oh, that should be 1 over I just made a fast table up here that I counted i, and then what's one third to that power? So one third to the zero is one, one third to the one, oh man, so I did three to the i. So three to the first is three, three to the second is nine, three cubed, 27, three to the fourth, 81, three to the fifth, 243. I just did times three going down in that column. All right, so one third to the fifth, that means we're going to stop at 5. OK, so all we do is rewrote it in sigma notation. So this is really similar to what we did in the last section. And we are ready to apply that formula we have somewhere up here. Not the easy one, but the complicated one right here. You want to be a little careful when you apply this. What we just had. 5 was n minus 1. So we got to be a little bit careful. So I'm going to give you an alternative version for the geometric series. You can use either one. So 
what I'm going to do on this version is I'm going to go one further. So I'm going to go one term further, which means that n is going to turn into an m plus 1. I'm going to go one further. So you can choose whichever of these two that you like better. I'll, pu uh, I'll put both of these on the, uh, you don't need to memorize these. I think these are kind of tricky. So I will put this on your, uh, cheat, your cheat sheet. And I'll put both versions on there. this version down below there. So everything is set. I start at 0, go up to 5. This is 1 minus 1 third over 1 minus 1 third. What power do I raise the 1 third in the numerator to? So it will be 6. So our original n was 5. So down here, that's n plus 1. So we're going to raise it to the 6th power. Uh, I don't really want you to multiply 1 third. Well, you, 1 third of the 6th power is not bad. It's just whatever 3 times that, 1 third times that number. But I don't think that's the best way to spend your time in this class. So this is an OK final answer for me. You can type in your calculator if you want. But that will be our answer. WebWork should take answers like this. So on these problems I'm giving you, you could compute them by hand. They're finite, so any finite sum you could find by hand by adding up terms just one at a time. Obviously, you have to fill in the pattern to get up to 256 if you're going to do that. Uh, that's not what we're going to do. What we're going to do is write out the summation notation or the sigma notation. How much is this going up by if you look one term going to the next? How do we go to the next term? So we got a times 2. So this is going to look like 2 to the n. What value gets me the first term? So 2 to what power equals 4? So 2 to the 2. So our initial, I shouldn't use n. I was using i's before. We'll keep going with those. So our initial i will be 2. Now I want to find the final i value, 2 to what power is 256? So let's say you don't know that. So we're going to make a table, i, and then 2 to the i. So 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, 4, 8. So go ahead and keep filling this table out. You just keep doubling. You shouldn't have to go too far to hit 256. You may have to go a little bit past 7, but it shouldn't be too far past 7. Make sure you're doubling and not just adding 2. Make sure you're multiplying by 2. You'll take forever to get there if you add 2.
So another thing you should notice in our world of technology, these numbers are kind of familiar when it comes to storage capacity or memory. Not a coincidence, powers of two are all over the place with computers and electronics. So that's why you see things like your new iPhone's got, I think, 64 or 128 or 256 capacity. So that's where those numbers are not pulled out of thin air. My old iPhone had 64 gigabytes. Or 64, yeah. But then it got stolen. No, I only have a 16 gigabyte. Oh, no. It went backwards, too, on this list. All right, <clears throat> so that's how we're going to look at progression. Uh, if it was powers of seven, that would be kind of annoying. I'm not particularly great at powers of seven once you pass 49. I'm not really sure what comes next. I'd have to compute those by hand. They're not easy to do. But powers of two or three are usually relatively quick to double or triple in your head. All right, why can I not just use that little formula from above? Where did that go? There it is. Why can I not just apply this right here? What's the problem? So our problem is we're not starting at zero. So there's a few ways to address this. We did. We addressed this issue in the previous section. We can re-index. So let's go with that as our first step here. Let's do a re-indexing. So what I'm going to do is take i down by 2. So I'm going to start my i value 2 lower. So everywhere else I see i, I have to compensate for this. So if I start it 2 lower, I have to stop it too lower, or I won't have the same number of terms. What do I do? I can't just write 2 to the i, because I won't be thinking about the same terms. So how do I compensate for this? That's right. So we'll go 2. So it's almost i minus 2. We actually want to, because we're going to decrease i by 2, we have to compensate inside and undecrease it by 2. The best way to, uh, in my opinion, the best way to do this reindexing is take your best guess and then check. So what are my initial, what's my first term now? If I plug in 0, 2 to the 0 plus 2 is 2 squared, that's 4. And that indeed is the correct first term. So I recommend guessing and checking is better than trying to sit there for 8 minutes and rack your brain and uh, just take your best shot and then see if it's actually going to work out. You could check the very last one as well. 2 to the 6 plus 2, 2 to the 8th, which we computed already was 256 right there on our little chart. So the first term works, the last term works. Pretty sure the terms in between are going to work as well. All right. We traded one problem for another. Why can I not use that formula at this point? I'm starting in the right spot. My problem is not my initial i value. What's the new problem? So what is different between the, obviously r is 2, but what is different here? That stupid plus 2. Oh, man. How are we going to deal with that? So what we're going to do now is use algebra. So we don't have to worry about re-indexing it anymore. We're starting at the right value, but we do need some algebra here. So I could write this as 2 to the i times 2 squared, which is 4 times 2 to the i power. All right. Uh, any questions on that? That's just regular exponent rules. You've probably seen that 
100 times before or more. So now I'm going to do another algebra step. So the algebra I just did, it looks like I swapped the order of 4 with that sigma. What I actually did was factored. My favorite F word. Where does this factoring come from? Let's write out what we're actually looking at here. So the first term is 4 times 2 to the 0 power. The next term, 4 times 2 to the first. The next term, 4 times 2 squared, etc., etc., until we get 4 times 2 to the 6. So that's what that sigma notation means. Now, on the right side, when you see all this expanded out, it should be pretty clear, I can factor 4 out. There's a 4 in every single term. So on the right side, this is 4 times 2 to the 0, plus 2 to the first, plus 2 squared, dot, 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 plus 2 to the 6th power, right there. So on the right side, you should be pretty convinced of what I just did. That's nothing surprising on the right side. I just factored a 4 out. The way it looks in sigma notation is kind of strange. In sigma notation, it looks like I just swapped the order of the 4 and the sigma. So it's important that you understand what's happening on the right side, why you're allowed to do this. So now use the that nice formula up here. I'll copy it and paste it. Or I'll just rewrite it down here. So go ahead and use that formula and tell me what this adds up to. So any questions on 508? I'm not terribly good at multiplying. I have no idea what 4 times 127 is. But I know 4 times 128 is, two, is 512. So it's just 4 less than that. All right, so there's our second finite geometric sum. Let's do an infinite sum. So we'll do the exact same series, geometric series, except just go on forever. So without doing any actual work, rewriting this, what will this equal if I add it together? Infinity. infinity. So you keep adding bigger and bigger positive numbers. So definitely this will be infinity. If you rewrote it, it would be 2 summation 2 to the i, i equals 2 to infinity. You could re-index it, but this is an infinite 
geometric series. Our R in this case equals two. And of course, absolute value two is greater than or equal to one. So in this case, our R is too big. And so this uh, is gonna be infinity. So we'll do one more geometric series problem in disguise. All right, so in this case, <clears throat> I don't think I've used this notation before. This does not mean the conjugate of nine. What does this bar mean? in a decimal. It's repeating. Repeating. So this is a point nine 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 forever. Forever. Forever and ever. So what we need to do first is turn this into a series. So the way I'm going to break this down into a series, well first of all we're trying to prove an identity. Which what is easier? One or this infinite decimal? One. One. So let's put that away. So I want to rewrite this decimal as a, uh, a sum. So I'm going to write it as 0 0.9 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.009 plus 0 0.0009. So we're basically going one decimal digit at a time and adding those together. So you should be able to see if I add just these first four together, I'd get 0 0.999, no, 0 0.9999. And if I keep going, I get the next nine, the next nine, the next nine, and the next nine. All right, so this will be nine tenths plus, what is the fraction for the next nine one hundredths? And then I get nine one thousandths, nine ten thousandths. All right, what can I factor out? Nine. I could factor out a nine. I could actually factor out more than nine. nine tenths. Oh, I could factor out nine tenths. All right. So we're left with one plus, what would the second term be? So we're getting all the nines out. Uh, one, tenth. one tenth. And third term, one one hundredth. Uh, of course, the pattern here is pretty clear. We got one one thousandth plus et cetera, et cetera. All right, these are all powers of a certain number. What number are these powers of? So these are all powers of a tenth right here. So this is summation, one tenth to the i, i equals zero to infinity. And of course you gotta bring down your nine tenths that we factored out. All right, this is perfectly lined up in a geometric series. Starts at zero, the radius is small. This one is way less than one. So it's okay to add these together. So go ahead and use that formula that I wrote down a few times, somewhere up here in purple. So you're gonna use this formula right here. I can't really keep it on the board, but it should be in your notes a couple times. Use that formula and write down this infinite sum that's on the board. And simplify this down as much as you can. Step one for simplifying, you need to add the fractions in the denominator carefully. Make sure you go common denominator, add those two together. Or subtract those two, I should say.
So just like trig identities, you started on the complicated side. We had to use way different tools. Obviously, there's no trig involved in this, but the same idea. Start on the complicated side and arrive at the other side. <laughs>